Hello, I'm Joey, and yes, this is another part to our interview series powered by Taiwan's only all-English streaming platform, Taiwan Plus, and only all-English radio station, ICRT. And today we'll be speaking with, ooh, I would say a friend of mine, and I've known him for several years, I think at least five, Jason Wong. Hello! Hi, hi, Joey. <laughs> nice to see you again. Gordon Ramsay is where we're going to start, right? 2017's MasterChef Season 8, that's... Six, almost six years ago. Yeah, it's a while ago. <laughs> yeah, it's a while ago. You really brought like the Taiwanese cuisine to that or those tables, and I remember you wowed everybody with a, just a very simple clam soup. Right, mm -hmm. that was the one that put you on the map. Yeah. Now, was that like a family thing? Like, was that something inherited from mom or dad? Well, my uncle, so my mom's brother, um, even though he not a professional chef. Everyone in their family just cooks really well, and I remember he would always just take really simple ingredients and turn them into really delicious things. And I remember him making just the um, ge li tang, just simple uh, the rice wine and then the ginger and the clams, and it just really focused on the flavor of the clams, which was super yummy. So. You know, the mystery box challenge that I had on MasterChef, they gave us the most luxurious ingredients. And I thought, well, why don't I just do a fancified version of something that I know that um, is just tried and true and delicious. And yeah, true. it not only had delicious flavor, but it had a story behind it. And I think the best foods that you eat always have some cultural memory or it reminds you of someone or reminds you of a place you were at. So um, I just loved making that soup and I was glad to share it. And I was surprised that everyone had such a reaction to it. But. Yeah, I really that's what I really love about cultures that have food at the forefront of their relationships. Um, Italians, for example, right? And certainly Asian, Taiwanese people. Um, every dish you make for your guests, there's a story behind it. And it's really fun to like sit there and listen to the chef telling their stories. So when you were at MasterChef, did you find that kind of connection with different people from different cultures? What I really loved about MasterChef was we're all from the US, yeah. but we're all from different regions. And there are so many different types of regional cooking, like in Louisiana, and then the Texas style barbecue, and then you have um, <clears throat> Pacific Northwest, that's a whole different style. Yeah. So just getting to meet all those people and hear their story and their culture through their food, that was what was most exciting to me. Because take for example, okra. I love okra, but chou kue, I'm used to just having it steamed and then you dip in sauce yeah. or, you know, in the salad. But in the South, they fry it, they batter it, they make it crispy, all sorts of different things. So it's just, taking a view at the same ingredients through different lenses, I think is, is really fun. So yeah, I, I will call people from the show still like, hey, Yashika, like, how do I do this? Or my friend Kate in Chicago, <clears throat> you know, I have some mushrooms and I don't know what a, like, what would you do with this? So we all stay in close touch and it's just like a big food family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Americans in the South tend to fry everything and they use a bar of butter for everything. But but people in Taiwan tend to fry everything too. <laughs> that, oh, that you know what? I didn't think about that. That works very well together. Yeah, all of our like street food delicacies, like yeah. half of them at least are fried foods. Yeah. Um, your new show is all about that, right? Jason's Table. But some would call it Jason's shocking table because, Yay! yes, there you go. Like, you, to be shocked and surprised is a part of this show with Taiwan Plus. And you guys just had, you just aired your first episode. You obviously invite a lot of people from different cultures um, to kind of clash with Taiwanese cuisine. Uh, is this an opportunity for, you know, like cultural exchange as well? Well, so the show, uh, Jason's Table Shocked and Surprised, premieres every Sunday. The first episode just dropped. Yeah. And it premieres first on Taiwan Plus, and then it's available on YouTube two days later, also available on the Taiwan Plus app. Okay. So lots of ways of accessing the content. But shocked and surprised, the whole concept is that there are foods that to foreigners or people who aren't familiar with the food, um, it's shocking or surprising. Yeah. Now, is it shocking scary? Like, ooh, Internal organs, yes, sometimes. Is it shocking and surprising like, oh, wow, I didn't know that there was beef noodle soup that can cost like 375 US dollars mm -hmm, a bowl. Like, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money for a bowl of soup. Yeah. So I think the concept of the show that, um, and the part that really sticks out for me is seeing people's reactions. Uh, and the guests are all from different cultures, different country backgrounds. And I think it's really great to see their reactions 
based on their initial impressions of a food、mm. and then to dive deeper in it and really kind of look into well why do we feel this way about this or you know why do chicken feet make me feel scared or、yeah. why do chicken testicles make me feel a certain <laughs> kind of way you know、um, and I think what I really realized is that anything that you're unfamiliar with、yeah. it's gonna present some kind of fear level like not to beat a dead horse but I mean we're, we're in COVID right It's like multiple years, yeah. But this is the first time that it's really going through community spread in Taiwan. Whereas in the U.S., like it's been happening for two years,、mm-hmm. people are a little bit less sensitized to it now,、yeah. for better or for worse, right? But anytime you're exposed to something that you don't know and you there are variables or it's it's unfamiliar or it's the appearance is not. Something you're comfortable with, it's gonna make you feel a certain way. Yeah, and I think that's especially about foods. And a lot of times with foods like tofu tofu and stinky things, stinky tofu, other things, a lot of it is based on someone's impression of something, and、yeah. then they like, hey Joey, did you know that blah blah blah? Or like, but you haven't experienced it yourself, but you have a preconceived notion. So I think it's important to kind of. I, I'm a food pusher. When I was growing up and in college, I would make people eat things. They're like, "No, no, I don't eat." I almost like just put it in your mouth. <laughs> Or they're like, "No, no, no, I don't, I don't."、And、I said, "Just, I don't care. You're gonna eat and take a bite, and then you're gonna tell me." And I changed a lot of people's minds about food, and that's what this show hopefully does as well. Yeah, I would say、uh, fear of the unknown is one of the you know darkest side of the human psyche, right? Like to. Explore is a courageous thing to do, and that's what the whole you know, like Lovecraftian novels are about. You know, something that you don't know or unfamiliar with.、Yeah. Food is one of them. However, some people find thrills in trying out new food. Like, for example, you said chicken testicles. For you to travel to a foreign land and see chicken testicles and try them out, it's a test of your, your bravery, right? Yeah. And how brave was Dooley when he?、Uh, Participated on this journey with you. I think it's so nice that Dooley came as a guest. He's just very generous spirit and has a wonderful positive energy to him. So I think he was probably up for everything. But yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I, unfortunately, in, in the show, there are two boxes, and then the guests can pick which box they want. The first episode is on、yeah. heavenly and hellish cuisine,、oh, focused、okay. on chicken. And he unfortunately picked the box from hell,、uh-huh. and in there was chicken testicles. So. Um, I mean, he was a he was a, a good sport about it. But interestingly enough, I had never actually had them myself, so that、oh. was my first time trying them too. Chicken testicles. I appreciate that in Taiwan, a lot of the foods are very just from the earth. Yeah. So in like French cuisine, you see they, they'll the, the internal organs they'll blend into sauce or just transform it so you don't actually know what it is, but you get the flavor. Whereas in Taiwan, they're like a chicken testicle is a chicken testicle. Yeah.、Um, I think it's important to really. Understand where your food comes from, and a lot of times、uh, in certain cultures, you only see like a chicken breast. You only see a fish fillet. Yeah. People have no idea where their food is coming from. You, it's like you, that that came from a chicken with a head and legs and, and feathers. It's like yeah, you know. So I really appreciate that about、um, Taiwanese cuisine. That's a good and point. And I think people people grow up feeling comfortable with trying out things that are from the earth. So. Yeah, for Dooley to try the chicken testicles, I'm like, good for you. A lot of the guests have been here in Taiwan a while as well, and I think、mm, they are picking up the best parts of Taiwan culture and traditions to to meld with their own. Uh, stories from where they come from, and I love that. Yeah, it, it's very important to know what you're eating and where they come from.、Uh, but you know, talking about strange or exotic cuisine, it's not like the West don't have them. I mean, black pudding, for example, right?、Um, that's blood. That's pig blood. Um, escargot is a famous one, you know, from the French.、Um, and there's this one、um, from、uh, Australia, Vegemite, Vegemite, which started literally as like waste product after brewing beer, and then people thought that, hey, let's use this yeast for something. So you know, people use all sorts of stuff for food. Now, for you, Jason, personally, what are some of your favorites and、uh, least favorites? I wouldn't say least favorite, just ones that you don't often try of Taiwanese cuisine. Can you name a few of your favorites first? Well, one of my favorites is definitely shaojian or little squids, yeah, little calamari, because in the U.S. you cannot get that kind. You typically would just say calamari, and that encompasses all the different sizes, like small, big, whatever.、Yeah. Uh, but in Taiwan, just because the the this the 
uh, attention to detail in the food culture.、Yeah. The smallest ones are xiao zhen, then there's zong zhen, the middle sized one, then there's tao q, and there's tou. So it's all the different sizes have their own specific because they're technically different types of calamari. Are they all different? I didn't know that. So it's not the same one that just got bigger and bigger. They're all different types of calamari. So、oh. they're very specific. You're like, I want to eat this kind, I want to eat that kind. Um, I think Taiwanese people are just very knowledgeable about food, even if they don't realize it themselves. So wait, I'm so ashamed being Taiwanese that all I could ever really tell the difference are the ones that become slightly yellowish when they get, you know,、yeah. raised or steamed, yeah, and the ones that are whiteish. White. That's my that's the extent of my food knowledge in squid. But Joey, you know that there are two different ones, so that's a good start. In general, people just say calamari, right? And it's just like, okay, it's calamari, something fried. I don't even know what it is, you know. FYI, for people, Taiwan is known for our seafood and fruits. Like these are the two biggest categories that we're known for in variety.、Uh, what other favorites do you have? Other favorites, I really like.、Um, well, just you mentioned the, the fruits.、Um, I, yeah, that, that's a food category for sure. Yeah, fruits of Taiwan、yeah. because the climate of the、uh, of the island and how things are grown, the fruits. It's like it's like you gave them the best growing conditions they could ever have. So they're like living their best life. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. All the fruits, the flavor, the aroma, and the other big thing I noticed is that fruits and eating seasonally. Go hand in hand in Taiwan. Yeah, specifically yeah. if mangoes aren't in season, you don't buy them at the store. They aren't there.、Mm -hmm. You know,、mm -hmm. or it's like okay, it's time for strawberries. There's a short window where you can get Taiwan strawberries, and there's similarly like okay, there are certain times of the year where you can't buy certain fruits, and I think that is a great, great,、mm, important aspect of what makes. Food so important in Taiwan. It's that it's always served at the height of its season, at the height of its freshness, at the height of its、uh, ripeness. So all those flavors, you know, sometimes in other countries, it's like, all right, we can get blueberries twelve months of the year. It's like, where did these blueberries come from in the dead of winter? True. I've noticed growing up in an Asian household that you know, mom would just tell you that okay, summertime is time for watermelon and mangoes,、yeah. and then wintertime is time for strawberries and other berries. Um, is that common knowledge in the states? I think there are a lot more people now that there is an emphasis towards eating local,、uh -huh. sustainable farming, and also just thinking about waste, especially with you know prices going nuts everywhere. If you think about okay, I'm buying maybe raspberries from Mexico. How do they get from Mexico to my grocery store in Boston, Massachusetts? Yeah. Somebody has to pick them. They're out of season. They have to be stored. They have to be transported. They go through so many different things that all take up natural resources, yeah, right? Yeah. Whereas, if I'm getting a raspberry from my local farmer, maybe half an hour away, yeah, I can probably only get it for a couple weeks in the summer. But it didn't travel that far, and I'm getting direct from the plant to my mouth in probably like one or two days. Yeah, and I think that makes it even more nostalgic when you think about that food, right? Because in the winter you're like, oh man, I wish I could just have a juicy watermelon. You know, okay, we gotta wait a couple months till the summer heat comes, and then we can have that juicy watermelon. Yes, the wait does make it so much better when you bite into that first slice of watermelon. Yeah, and it's true that you know buying local sourced fruits or vegetables, you know that you're also contributing to the local economy.、Mm -hmm. so、you're essentially buying fruit from your neighbors, right? You're you're helping your neighbors keeping their、yep. businesses alive, and that is. Uh, an idea that I think is appealing to a lot of people too. When I was a kid, I never said, "Oh, I want to be on TV" or "I want to, you know, do this sort of thing." I feel that, especially coming from、uh, being a teacher background, it's important that when people watch shows or listen to things that I do, yeah, it's entertainment, obviously, but that people are able to take something away that can improve how they live or how change how they view the world.、Um, so, especially in a program.、Um, Where I have an opportunity to in interact with guests from foreign countries, you know, Jason's table that the shocking and surprising I think can also describe a little bit people's own reactions to their own impressions of things. Yeah, yeah. So I think now that we know that the world is not as big of a place as we thought it was, and that distances really don't matter so much, sooner or later we're going to be interacting with cultures and people that we're not familiar with. And to find that common ground, 
on a plate of food, yeah, maybe we don't speak your language or you don't speak mine, but okay, blood sausage, blood sausage. Like, <laughs> is it? Yeah, exactly. That's a good mandate. I would say that is、uh, definitely a mission for a show like Jason's Table to be shocked and surprised at the same time, but also to learn about other culture and start that dialogue. So today we had Jason Wong, a music teacher by vocational choice, a chef at birth, but truly in his heart, he is an educator.、Uh, and、uh, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to more episodes of Jason's Tables. For those of you who want to、um, follow this show, where do we watch it? And what time do we watch it? So you can watch it on Taiwan Plus on their website. You can download the app, or it will be released on YouTube. And new episodes will drop every weekend. Okay, cool. And Jason Wong, thank you. Have a good one. Bye bye. Joey, you're the best. Thanks.